we deal with the abyss with humor. That's what we do, human beings. You know, you crack a joke to say something serious. That's somehow what we do, you know, like, we use irony to, to communicate. Like, when, I, when I'm telling my friend that I love him, I just say, like, ah, oh, you fucking asshole. You know? <laughs> that's, how, that's, how we, that's how we communicate. But every five years, my mother spits on me. And we record it on video. And now there are four pieces. So, like, I started this 2000, when, uh, when I was a young lad. <laughs> and it's like a weird family tradition to go to your mother every five years and like have, so we like, I come and she spits on me and then I take a shower and we have coffee. He came to me and said, mother, uh, would you help me? Uh, I'm going to do some performance and some spitting and so on. And I said, yes, darling. I do everything for him, just everything. Sort of my work was born with this piece because I, I realized that like, like I had a lot of trouble with it in art school also, like you like was always saying, like, Ragnar, you're always pretending. And then I just realized, like, I always pretend. I can't help it. So that's, that's the real me. I'm sorry. I came across Ragnar in 2009. I went to the Venice Biennale, and I stumbled across this grand palazzo near the water. And Ragnar was doing a performance, a durational performance of six months, where he kind of became this bohemian painter and sat in this stunning yeah, palazzo with his friend and model, and he painted the same picture over and over again every day for the whole six months. They were drinking beer, smoking cigars, and I just thought, I wondered what it was. I couldn't work out whether I was stepping into a fiction or something that was happening real before me. That's what's beautiful about Ragnar's work, that slippage between fact and fiction, and not sure where you are. Contemporary art can be quite serious, and Ragnar does riff off the performance artists from the 1970s, like Marina Abramovich and Chris Burden, but Unlike those psychologically charged and durational performances, his are much more playful, humoristic, and I think that's what people love about it. So I'm really excited to bring his work to uh, new audiences, and hopefully they will be charmed by his work like we have all been at the Barbican. Yeah, I work a lot with my family and friends, and I think it's, it's somehow like natural. It's almost like continuing to play, you know. That's also like what I'm growing up with, like my people in my family, like my parents are actors and my sister's an actor. And like, her husband is a set designer that was in, in a lot of bands when I was a teenager. And that's like, then like friendship was blossoming through collaboration. And it kind of had just continued like that to, to, you know, to make a song with people or do paint sets with your friends or do something, you know, something that, that uh, is, is constructive in some nihilistic way of being constructive. I was always told by my parents that I was conceived like after they filmed this scene in, a, in like this erotic thriller. My mother plays the lead role and there's the scene where she's kind of fantasizing on the sofa and then everything goes into soft focus. And then you see her having this dream of a plumber coming to uh, fix the dishwasher. And they have this conversation like, you know, do you think it can be fixed? Yes, I'm afraid so. And then she says, I'm desperate. Are you a man? Take me, take me here by the dishwasher. So, and then I just like became an artist and I always just had this material. It's like, it's too good. It's like, it's having a portrait of your parents, like the day when you were conceived. So I was like, and also like, because like the, the pieces are so much about pretending. And then in a way this piece is, uh, it's like it's like a proof that, like you know, I wasn't even conceived for real. Was, they pretended to have sex when I was conceived by the dishwasher, <laughs> and and so then I then I asked uh, Kjartan Sveinsson, who's a great Icelandic uh, musician and composer, used to be in this band called Sigurros, and uh, it's like written gorgeous music through the years. And I just asked him to like write gorgeous songs to that to that stupid lyric that they do by the. The, the conversation by the dishwasher. And with his kind of somber music, suddenly the words became very kind of spiritual and beautiful and poetic. And I think like my mother is coming tonight and, uh, and it's like, and I like this, it's like it's all this beautiful young man and then there's this huge projection of my mother masturbating on a sofa. It's very, it's, it's very illegal. <laughs> She's gonna like it. so many images in current life through social media, through TV, through the internet.